Sunday morning, the, I think it's an endoscope, isn't it? It's charged up. So we're going to stick it down that drain and see if we can see anything. Don't know whether I'm going to need um, draining rods though to get it all the way down or it'll just go down on its own. We'll try it and see. We've got the camera in the bottom and it doesn't really look to be showing me anything of any sort of blockage. Back to the pond then, this is where we found a pipe yesterday, we're going to dig over there now, see if it's flowing to here yet, and then if not we'll get some rods in it and rod it back. got the finding thing and it's now throwing it down again so I don't know whether we might wait till the rain's gone off. John's obviously dug here and not found it, he's filled the hole back in. <laughs> I mean you can see the rain now. Chucking it down. I got the scanner to find the drain, but the time I got back, John had obviously where he was digging, it was filling the hole back in again because he found that it was bubbling up again. So the blockage is obviously further down. So the hole we dug yesterday, we're going to dig around it better so that we can get down to it properly, get some rods in and rod back and see if we can find a restriction in it. So uh, we're just going to go get the big digger for that because we've got quite a bit of spoil to move to get in to make it safe. Got the whizzer as well because there's a little bit of rebar sticking up out of the yard. I noticed last time I was up at Wellbrook, so I'm going to cut that off so it's not going to go in anyone's tyres. Yeah, that's going to give someone a puncher, especially as it's right in the gateway. I'll trim that off, there's another one there actually. That's the price you pay for free hardcore. It only takes a minute. Dig round that one now and cut this one off as well. Sometimes they'll pull out, sometimes they'll just go forever and be attached to about half the garage or something. Absolutely chucking it down again. The state of the track. I don't even see it across the field, it's that wet. We're wandering all that muck. The chain on now on the side of the road because then you're not going to boot even more here. Yeah. Chained it on and now the rain stopped. Anyway, the horses are out now. Now the field's finished. Um, that wheat looks a bit wet still. It's, it's still growing up. We've gone 300 metres down the road and it's dry as a bone. We've just, we just got soap load in the digger. 100 metres up the road and it's rained here again. Digger's coming off the low loader now. I'm going to snip to Brookhouse and get the uh, Cobra sort of thing for putting down the drains. I was going to go on this so I can put it in the bucket because it's easier. Get some fire lighters out as well for the Hendu. So John's pulled all this soil back and then now we've got a huge wide hole. There's the pipe exposed there. So we'll get the Cobra in the bottom and put it that way and see how far it goes and then wherever it jams. It's either going to poke leaves and sticks out and water's going to come or it's going to. Um, jam solid and there must be some rubble maybe fell into it and crushed the pipe and then we'll have to dig down to it but we need to measure them by how much it goes in it's now chucking it down again but there's a blue sky over there somewhere so I'll just give it five minutes before I climb in the hole I'm gonna lift that down now into the hole see what we can do He only put it in about 10 metres and then suddenly started flowing. So I put that brick there to stop it washing any silting or anything else. But there must have been a sticker, a branch or something. See when the water level drops. If I'd have known that, we could have just <laughs> we could have just put it in the ditch the other day. But we were convinced it was this willow tree. Still might be some roots off that that caused the problem, but it's going down now at least. That's flowing in there nicely off through the bushes and hopefully oops, go along with this branch rather than round it. Hopefully, coming out now in the bottom area. Yeah. There you 
progress. And it'll go off down that ditch there. This was yesterday's quiz question, and it is an 85, 850 Manitou, which I presume is five ton to eight meters, and it has got a big bucket on it because John had what would you have on it? 3.2 ton. 3.2 yeah, ton of weed. Yeah, so we'll have a proper play of it, I think, tomorrow. Um, I can't see us doing any field work. I think as well. It's got electric mirrors, electric windows, and electric mirrors. So. We'll put it through its paces this next week and see what we think of it. It's got a phone holder as well. I think it's like the one they had at the open day with the toolbox. It's on him. Um, are these 580 tyres? 500 tyres. It's a big beast. Yeah, so we'll see what it's like this week. So I'm next with the scale, James. <laughs> yeah, it's a monster. Just on the quad track, looking for the knife that Morgan's dropped right behind the seat for when we gave him his roast dinner last week. Um, Mum's done an audit and found there's one missing. Obviously, I was in Poland looking around some farms the other day. Anyway, here's a bit more around the farms. Just to explain a little bit of the background in Poland. So, all got split up. Everyone could get a bit of land. So, everyone's got like little, like two and a half hectare strips of land. Well, when you go to some of the villages, you've basically got these clusters of farms, and then a lot of the land will be further away from itself. So, you go into a village, and like basically everyone lives on a farm, and they're all within a few meters of each other. And they have like narrow strips of land with the farm on and the buildings, and then all the sort of the grazing or the, the fodder that they bring to the cows they have to travel for. So anyway, here's having a little bit of a look around one of the villages that's full of farms. We've just arrived at another farm in the village and you can see the village now over view of it. So there's nine farms in this village, 2,000 cows, but like that shed doesn't belong to this farm. He has a shed over there and there's another shed over there and then there's another one around the corner and they all farm independently to each other. They don't share kit or anything, it's crazy. And they're all in like thin strips, bonkers. But anyway, we'll have a little mooch around, but how many cows are they milking here, Jake? Uh, 600, I think, somewhere. 600, so we'll have a look, see what's going on, see what kit they've got. Just having a little mooch at his tractor. I think they're here servicing at the moment, the dealer, John Deere dealership. Was it Frickled, is it? A 6175M, which is, oh, he's got a Valtra over there as well. That's like the older cab, isn't it, on the M series. Look at this building as well, it's nuts. There's his triple Sam As mowers. Whoa, look at them springs. So, you've got steel work in the top. And you've got these like tubes coming down. Not shake the roof. A generator there just blowing the exhaust fumes through the wall to nowhere. A bit random. Sort of a conventional trailer, what we'd have in the UK there on airbag suspension. And, ooh, what happened then? Another robot milker here, two dollar Val. Milkers. Other well, sort of cow shed. I think he said he makes milks 160. I might have got it wrong before. I was just wondering if he had one of them robots are pushing up like we saw yesterday. So we're gonna go and see. Looks like he's got a lelly. A lelly like sweeper upper because scraper because there's the charger, isn't it? Oh here we go, it's a it's a lizard. A lizard pusher upper. Oh, I can put minerals on as well, can't it? Oh, pellets. Oh, that's good, isn't it? It's obviously on charge now. It's an auger machine. So it augers it across? Yeah, on the front. Oh, there you go, yeah. Ah, so that mooches along like a snowblower. Pushes the feed up and then it can also add nuts to it as well. It's clever that, isn't it? 
pops out the back here, some more cows. Little, oh look at little tractor there. Oh, Osiris. When that fires up every hour, because it's mixing a bit of pellets in with it, the cows obviously all come over and have a fresh eat because they've seen that go up and down and know that it's hidden basically sweets in the in the silage for them. And then them pipes there. They spray water on the cows. It gets to 35, 40 degrees in the summer here. So we just left that farm, come out the track, walking into next door. For some reason they've dissed up that headland. Looks like a bit of barley they've dissed up. Why they've done that. So we're going to go and have a look at this farm. It's got some Deutsch tractors, a couple of big tankers. Talking of big tankers, there's one there. Tri axle. Oh, yeah, and there's another farm there. <laughs> Seen a lot of these. It's like a maypole while we've been driving. Big rock with like a fence and a maypole thing. And I'll just step across here. Don't get my boots dirty. So it stink on the plane. Have a look on the big joskin. Triaxle. So they're trying to, in the UK, we're not allowed to use a splash plate anymore because it says it gives off ammonia with the muck falling on the floor because it sort of atomizes some of it. But out here, they're still allowed to use them, but they are trying to get rid of them because that's sort of squirting out quite high up. Monster that. It's fertiliser as well, stored outside. We're always worried about doing that in case the bags get wet. Looks like the milk tank has just turned up now. Collect the milk. It's not an Arctic, but it's pulling another trailer with another tank on. This farm's a bit different to the last by the fact that they've got a parlour down the middle. Um, I think there's milk 300 cows, I think 150 and 150 up the road. And then they have, uh, that's where the staff lives, so the six staff live up there. All Ukrainian that do the milking. You must have one of them robot pusher uppers though because uh, you can see where the floor's painted ready to push it in on. Oh, unless they use a little tractor, I don't know. These are bedded on straw as well, not slats like the other farm. They all seem happy, it's very quiet in here. That's just walking in the shed and you can see the back of the shed's on slats. According to Jake, the, the price they're on for milk here works at about 60 pence a litre. It's pretty decent really. I think it's around 40 in the UK. The bigger the herd, the more you get paid for your milk because there's a more consistent product getting delivered to the dairy. If you've only got a few cows, you've got to try and blend that and mix it. Whereas if you're delivering a large volume, like you saw the two tankers outside before, then they'll pay you a better price for it because there's less sort of blending needed. Just say that again, what you just said. So I, I asked how much the milk was in the shops, and what do you reckon it is? Yeah, so the milk's 85 pence a litre in the which, shops. Which is probably similar to the UK. So someone somewhere isn't ripping the farmers off. Yeah, so the farmers get paid 70, 70 pence per litre. 60 to 70 pence a litre. Yeah. It's so, 85 in the shops. Yeah. And you're getting 37, 37 pence per litre, Brad. Uh, at home. This morning. Yeah. 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 So like they nearly double the price off the farm but in the shops, it's not actually any more money. Right. So yeah, rip off Britain. Yeah. Just walking back now, I'm going past another farm. So that's four in, the, in, in 300 meters. Just saying then about the price, we're only seeing a snapshot of today. So today they might have a good price and tomorrow they might have a good price, but we don't know what they had last year and we don't know what they have going forwards because it gets a little bit lost in translation. But at the moment they seem to be doing okay. Just gonna have a quick look at another farm. They look like they're a, a granite um, dealer. Got a forage wagon and a Valtra as well. Ooh, what happened there? There we go. Two forage wagons. There's a hitch like we've got on a fence. And then this is machinery shed. Some class forage box, a Lely forage box, some rakes in the back, and big muck spreader. A surprise, surprise. Some Samas, Moas, or Samash, 
I think it's pronounced. It's a big muck spread of this, isn't it? You have to load that with Telliano, wouldn't you? <laughs> and it'll offer us as well. Oh, look, there's um, a Seiko king, uh, king feeder, I think. No, not king feeder. King feeder is green. We used to have one of them, but for composting. It's a Samash front mower as well. Is that a, oh, no, I thought that was a tether, but that's not. That's for flicking the silage pit because they kind of like dump it in a lump and go up and down with that and scatter it about like a beastie tether. It's got his uh, fertiliser, half ton bags in your rear, is it? No, pull, pull rear, N46, it must be your rear. That's the machine I was yeah, for doing about. the silage clamps. Yeah, so it's a Polaris and... Um, Big tether thing. When they drive on the clamp and he goes on afterwards, instead of having a butt break, that just spins and... Flicks it out, out yeah. yeah. And there's his uh, mowers, rear mowers. Big mower, that when you stand next to it, isn't it, Joe? One thing we've kind of noticed out here is uh, their PTO shaft guards don't last very long. Pretty much every farm's like that. Let's have a quick mooch around. Parts depot. Ooh. Got everything. It's like an Aladdin's cave. Even track rod ends. Bet they've got that valve we need for the fent. From LED lights, belts, tines, the daft air couplings that we take off. Is that wood? Oh, the veins out of slurry pumps, aren't they? Wellies, chainsaw parts, metering units for Amazons, tines, every colour you could think of. Sprayer nozzles and sprayer bodies, wire brushes, power tools, other tools. Look at that too. <laughs> thing of toys. 1050 Fent. It's what you're getting now. Shots of vodka with your uh, shear bolts for your muck spreader. <laughs> like they're Merlot green shovels. I can you get one of them on the plane. Protests are happening in Walsall at the moment. Oh, right. But that's the taxi drivers. They won't be spreading stuff on the road, will they? No, no, but I might need to hit them. <laughs> <laughs> All the water pipe fittings as well. Just, just what you've always wanted, Joe, after a big night out. Yeah, yeah, lovely. <laughs> Me and Joe have snuck back outside because they're trying to supply us with more vodka. Nice Valtra there. Looks like someone else has been out in the wet, a bit sticky. There you go, there's a quiz question that's not going to be spoilt by Chris from uh, Samaz. What's that for? Let us know in the comments if you know. It's mad this building, it's like fabricated trusses, not RSJs, and then brick pillars and like concrete sort of like stanchions going up. Funny how, how they build things a lot different. Why don't we ever have these at home? It's a massive garage door with the springs on the top and the pulleys. It's proper though, isn't it? It's nearly as good as the floor. I love block paving. Beastie deer and tanker there. Uh, yeah, another farmer walking past. It's nuts. How many have we visited now? Five or six in the, in the, in the village. About 300 metres. Yeah. Madness. <laughs> Quick, Joe, we need to run. He's, he's, got, he's got the moonshine out now. He's on, he's on. This is that boy from the start. He is some boy. Yeah, see the moonshine out on the table there. So we're going to quickly run to the minibus and go. There's the moonshine, Joe. Now we've got like a coffee liqueur, but I tip mine in Joe's glass. Is that why I had so much? <laughs> Actually, no, I tipped it in Michael's glass. 
<laughs> but he's put it down, not drunk it. It's like yeah. Tia Maria on steroids. Guy makes it himself. Out of out of brewing like cow food or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a fruit, bit of barley and stuff, and um, a bit of coffee. Yeah, it's got like sixty-five <laughs> <laughs> percent. Taste every. Definitely take the ice off your in screen. It's not Coca-Cola, James. <laughs> Be polite. <laughs> 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 he killed, keep trying to give us more drink. Um, the rep that's here that works at the machinery manu uh, machinery dealer up the road, and saying that he want, went to a farm one day to do a deal, and because um, they got like different liquors out, he was there for three days. He got the deal in the end, but he didn't didn't leave the farm for three days because they were drinking. Crazy. <laughs> I've just worked out why they've got so many robots out here. It's because the drink goes further. Um, we were just about to leave to go to the airport now, but we're going to say thank you to, to, to Tomash for showing us around his farm and uh, his hospitality. Cheers, everyone. I hope you enjoyed a little taste of Poland. Totally different way to how it is here. Um, and I always thought it sounds really bad that they might be a little bit behind us or backwards, but no one here. They, they know what they're doing. They've, they've got all the kit that we've got. So thanks for um, Sam has Sam Ash machinery for, for taking us out there and showing us round um, I didn't really know a lot what they did either but I do now so that was pretty decent anyway thanks for watching today's video as well I hope you did enjoy Poland what's been your favourite bit you've seen in the last week let us know in the comments and I'll see you tomorrow you've been drinking out the bird bath again looks like anyway you're going to do the birthdays Ethan Armstrong's 19 Oscar Lund is 10 had him on yesterday is Oscar Hill sorry about that Ewan McDiamond David Willis is 57 Mike Ky Kyman's on there Arthur Newsham Gawley is 5 Roger Clark 73 John Kenyon 60 Mark Reed's 39 Andy Rogers is 60 Richard Cliff is 62 Pigeon Shooter Andrew Wright is 51 and we're now up to 63,942 Fent happy birthday everyone on there